In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the image to image tool in Automatic 1111. Image to image, sketch, in painting, in paint sketch, even in paint upload. This video has it all. Ready? Let's get started. The image to image tab is an essential tool in your AI art toolbox. It lets you create a new image or new elements of an image from an existing picture that you provide. There are so many powerful tools here, but let's start with the image to image tab itself. Really, you're going to use this tool if you have an image that you want to use as a starting point. You can use that image to pull elements of composition and color into a brand new image. So I've got an image here that I've generated earlier. It's a portrait of a girl on a city street. I use the SDXL base model to generate this image, but you can use any image you want, an existing photo, a painting, whatever. So to start, we'll drop that into the image to image box. You can also send images here from the text to image tab. Just click on send to image to image under your generation. At the top, just like we would for text to image, we can add in positive and negative prompts. If you did send your image across from text to image, the original prompt will appear just like you see here. Below the image box, you'll see all the settings we can play with. Now, a lot of these settings in this tab are shared with text to image, so I'll only touch on the image to image specific ones here. For a more in-depth explanation of settings, check out the video in the description. The first new setting is resize mode. Use this if your new image will have a different size or aspect ratio than your original image. For example, if your original image is landscape and you want your new image to be portrait, the default is just resize. This will stretch or shrink your original image to fit the new image you create. Crop and resize will keep the aspect of your original image and crop it to fit the new canvas size. Resize and Fill takes the original image, fits it into the canvas, and fills in the blanks with colors from the input image. I don't see much use for this one, but let me know in the comments if I'm missing something. Just Resize Latent Upscale is just like Just Resize, but also upscales the image if necessary. Note that this setting is a bit tricky to get right, and there are easier ways to upscale your images. Below resize modes, you'll find settings you're already familiar with, including sampling method, sampling steps, your size and batch settings, and the CFG scale. The most important setting here is denoising strength. Stable Diffusion makes images by taking random noise and converging it into an image based on your prompt. This setting will control how much extra noise is added to the picture and in turn will determine how different the new image is from the original. Lower settings won't change the image that much and higher settings will make bigger changes. I like to use 0.7 as a good starting point. Okay, so now for the fun part. Once you've sent over an image, you can start tweaking some settings to refine your picture. We sent this image over from text to image, so we have all of our settings and the original prompt. Now we could just start tweaking our prompt here, but bear in mind that the entire prompt plus the image will be used to create a new image. So if you aren't using the same model, seed, and sampler from the original image, you may get some weird results. So instead, we're just going to use some simpler instructions to see how it will affect the image. So let's get rid of the prompt and put in pink and blue hair. And let's keep the same sampling method and steps. We'll tick restore faces and we'll keep the default on just resize and keep our dimensions the same. And we'll set our denoising strength to 0.7 so we should see a bit of a variation in our output. Okay, so we can see that at 0.7, that's had a pretty big effect. So if we want something a little more subtle, Let's try lowering the denoiser strength to 0.5. And yeah, that's a much more subtle impact on the image. So you can keep on adding more detail here and reworking things until you get an image that you're looking for. When we use this method though, we can see that the prompt has had an impact on the entire image. The hair and eyes have changed, but so has the face and the clothes. Let's say we just want to change a particular part of the image and keep the rest just as it is. That's where InPaint comes in. InPaint is a powerful tool that allows us to paint over the specific parts of images that we want to change. This is especially useful when you like the overall composition of your image, but you get one of those cosmic nightmare faces from the hell dimension. Just 
No. To start, you can click on the InPaint tab or just click InPaint under the image to copy the image over and all of its settings. So now we can just paint over the particular part of the image we want to change, in this case, the hair. We can use the settings in the top right of the box to change the brush size or clear our selection if we go wrong. So let's just paint over the hair and then we can check our settings. We've seen some of these already, so we'll keep resize mode on default. Mask blur is the amount of blurring that happens around your painted mask. Lower numbers will give you harder edges, while cranking this up will affect how many pixels beyond your mask will be affected by your prompt. The default of 4 is usually fine, but feel free to play with this if you're getting hard edges. Mask mode determines what is actually changed in the image. In paint masked will change the parts you painted, while in paint not masked will change everything but the parts you painted. This is great if you want to change the background or large amounts of your image in one go. Next, you can choose the masked content set. These settings tell Stable Diffusion what method it should use as its basis for generating the new image part. The Fill option will take the in-painted area, blur it, then generate using that as its base. The original setting will use the original image, unaltered, as its base to generate a new image from. Latent Noise will fill the in-painted area with new random noise based on the seed number. This can be used if you want a result completely different from the original. Latent Nothing will fill in the painted area with a blend of the colors from the surrounding pixels and base the generation of that. These settings will have a dramatic effect on the output, but if you're making minor adjustments, the original setting will usually work great. The in-paint area setting is easily confused with mask mode but they are different. Choosing whole picture tells Stable Diffusion to use the whole picture as inspiration for the in-paint generation, while only masked will treat the masked area in isolation and not draw from the rest of the image. Typically, whole image is the best setting if you want the painted area to blend in, but if you do choose only masked, you can change the padding size right next to it, which will tell Stable Diffusion how many neighboring pixels it should take into consideration as inspiration for the new generation. And of course, below that, we have the CFG scale and denoising strength. Let's stick this on 5.5 and 0.6 and see what happens. Now that looks pretty good, but we can do even more with inpainting sketch. So let's say we want to give our model a scarf. We can send this image to inpaint sketch. Just like we did before, we can paint over the image, but we now have the option of choosing colors. So let's go with red here and just paint in the area we want to add our scarf to. And in the prompt, we'll just type in red woolen scarf. For this, you usually have to bump up the denoising strength. So let's go to 0.8 and we can keep all of the other settings the same as before. And let's hit generate. And yeah, that looks pretty good for a first try. Now you can keep iterating and adding to this to really get the results that you want. The last inpainting tool is inpaint upload. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's more of an advanced topic, but basically you can create a mask in another program like Photoshop using black for the parts that you want to keep and white for the parts that you want to change. It's actually a pretty powerful tool and if you have the patience to get really detailed, it can be really useful. And finally, that brings us to the sketch tab. If you're struggling to get the image you have in your head onto the screen using image to image or other tools, you can always flex your creative muscles and draw it out here. Simply drop in a white or black mask in the box provided and use the paintbrush to sketch out your idea. Use color to highlight the details you want to show up and pair that with your prompt and watch your sketch turn into something incredible. There is so much more image to image is capable of, and in my next video, I'll be showing you even more ways to level up your art with the image to image tab. If you found this video helpful, why not leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching to the end. I'll catch you later.